Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. Uh, Mishmash Monday. Hope you had a nice weekend. Uh, today we have a couple good things to uh, to get to. Uh, a flashlight fix uh, for a, uh, my mentor. And uh, also I want to start off the show with saying about collecting tools. You know, um, a lot of people, tool collectors, they collect all different types of tools. I, I collect, you know, I'm... I have a eclectic, I collect anything, you know, I just like what I like, you know, and that's it. But there are guys that collect specific brands, specific models, you know, the Snap-on guys, you got Snap-on guys that collect pre-war, post-war. Um, you have guys that collect catalogs, they'll pick a certain catalog, like a 1957 Miller's Falls catalog, and try and get every single tool that was in that catalog, and good luck to that, because Miller's Falls had some of the best catalogs going. But um, I came across a, uh, an article a while back that uh, I wanted to show you, and um, it has to do with when I was a kid growing up, there was a grocery store around the corner and it was uh, two old guys that ran it, the Dolly Brothers. And um, they took it over and it was an old grocery store. It had all the old oak shelving and uh, had those uh, ladders that would roll back and forth. But sometimes when you would go in there and you needed an item that was you know, maybe up on a shelf, they would pull out this little clamp and they would grab it and uh, take it down. And I was always fascinated by that thing when I was a kid. And, uh, and then I was at a, uh, I was at Elephant Trunk Flea Market and I saw it there and I said, and the guy said, you know what that is? I said, oh yeah, I do. So, uh, I gladly paid him. I think I paid 10 bucks for it. And, uh, let me show you what it is. And this is the item. Uh, for those of you old timers like me, you know exactly what this is. But some of the younger crew out there have probably never seen this and especially never seen it in action. Uh, and you can see it's just about over four feet long. It's got two handles here that you squeeze down. It has a wire that drives. It pulls on one handle and this handle will pull on this and it will close it up. You can see here. And what this is, it was called the Giraffe Reacher. And uh, what would happen is when, you know, the old time guys, when they worked in the uh, grocery stores or hardware stores or anything like that, if there was something up on a shelf, they would reach this up there and uh, they would grab it and it would close around the item and uh, they could take that item, take it off the shelf and uh, bring it down. It was just, it was something to watch, you know, and uh, it was really interesting to see. Now, what's so interesting about this item is that it was made by the Bridgeport Hardware Manufacturing Corp. And you remember this catalog, one of my favorite catalogs. This is a reprint of a 1925 catalog. You can see number 23. And you remember all the great things that are in this catalog from the last time I showed it. All the uh, the beautiful graphics and uh, everything that we collect today. The scraper that, uh, that uh, a lot of us <laughs> collect and the Bridgeport putty knives and uh, Ticket punches, they did, uh, you know, so there were people that will collect this whole catalog. Now, if you collect, I have a lot of tools in this catalog, but there are things in here that are just very difficult to get. You know, um, certain things are, are, you know, everybody can pick up, uh, you know, the, the, some of the pliers that they made and things like that. That might not be too difficult, but there were items in here that uh, are getting harder and harder to find. You remember we did a restoration on the tire tool, but uh, valve lifters, things like that, you know, sometimes they were a little difficult to find. But when I was looking through this catalog, uh, what was very interesting to me, that on page 19... Of this beautiful catalog i mean and you know how we love these crate openers these crate tools right i mean they made them um, and they showed you how to use it it's just a beautiful catalog but on page 19 look what we have here the giraffe reacher and look at the cool graphics on that huh and uh what this was you could see here it was a uh they and the guys used to dress like that too they would wear you know the bow tie and the vest and things like that and just look how nice that uh, that that whole display is. But uh, another I rearranged the light a little bit so you can get a better uh, look at it. But uh, another interesting thing is if you look at the cost of it, it says uh, here the list price is eighteen dollars for a dozen. You could get twelve of these for eighteen dollars. I mean that was amazing, huh? But you could see there it's got the dual handles, and so if you were collecting this whole catalog, if you wanted to collect all these, you know, think about how difficult it would be to find one of these. I mean, 
you never see these. I don't see these around, do you? Did you ever see these in a flea market or something? I mean, they're just hard. You never see them. They're usually sold with a store, and then they're, you know, when the store is gutted, these things are thrown out. So it's a pretty rare item, and I just like it, and I'll, I'll leave it the way it is. I just think it's super cool. Okay, next up on the march, my good friend and uh, mentor, Dan Semmel, had... Uh, he had this for years, this mini mag light, and you can see it's an older one because of, uh, here you can see where it's made. It's made in California and Ontario, California, and mini mag, and it's a, uh, it's three AAA. Um, this one is an LED, so it's not the, one of the early ones, but it's one of the early LED ones. But what happened, just like all the other uh, mini mag lights with the O-rings, uh, they don't have room to off gas, and, and the battery swelled up. And uh, you can see it's it's stuck in there, can't come out. So uh, I don't know how to get these front parts off. I, I don't want to start prying at this, but I, I want to try and uh, my thought is if I could drill a hole into that battery in there and then insert a uh, screw of some type like this and pull it out. Now, the reason that you, you want to pull these out is because if you bang the battery from the top, it'll expand it and, and put it in there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little of uh, my 50-50... Acetone and ATF in there just to loosen any corrosion around there. I'm going to drill a small hole in the middle and try and insert this in here until it grips and then see if I can pull it out. We'll give that a shot. I might need a coarser thread. This is a very fine thread. I might have to use a, a screw or something. I already started a small typical hole and we'll see what we can do. Okay, we have a hole in the back of that battery. You got to use a sharp drill bit, and you got to remember that you're going to get some battery gunk that, uh, whatever that is, if it's nickel cadmium or zinc, or I don't even know what kind of batteries these are, but you're going to have to wipe that off there. So always make sure you don't put that back in your drill bit case without cleaning it off. Now we're going to try and screw this in here into that hole, and when we get some good purchase, good grip, which is starting to grip already because it's a very fine thread, then we'll try and twist and pull. Oh, look at that. If I didn't do it on camera, you wouldn't believe. Look, look how nicely that came out. So we were able to, and look, there was another battery, I think, in front of it. And uh, let's see if there's another one in front of it. Um, I hear something in there. Oh, there. Look at this. Some of the paper that uh, came off the battery. But yeah, there's another one in there. You can see it. Hopefully that's not stuck because I don't. my drill bit won't be that long. But uh See here, it was good till December 2022 and it corroded. So it's because they don't, they can't off gas in these flashlights. That's why I really wasn't crazy about it. But uh, let's see if we get this one out and then we'll load it up and see. Okay, that works. battery is, is uh, also swollen in there. Now, this is called an aircraft bit. It's an extra, it's a, it's probably double the length of a regular jobber's bit. And this was given to me by Jeff and Daw. You remember the machinist uh, who he sent me a few things? So we're going to try this and we'll get down to that second battery. And then this hopefully will be uh, long enough to get to it. So we'll Here's see. It's something we pretty interesting. I'm drilling this, right? I'm trying to get that battery down there. And as I'm drilling the battery, I must have touched the side of the uh, casing. And look what happens when you touch the side of the casing with the battery and the drill. It's making contact with the light. So we know the bulb works, but now I just got to get that battery out of there. I mean, it's still got juice in it, but it's swollen. Isn't that something? I guess uh, LEDs will work all the way down to one point, or maybe there's two batteries in there. So it don't need the full three, uh, three okay, batteries. Okay, we broke through the top of that back battery. Now we're going to pass this through again. Screw it in here until it catches. And when it does catch, we'll keep turning. There we go. It's starting to catch. And we'll turn it to the right as we pull it. Keep tightening as we're pulling out. Here, and look at that. There is the second battery. And uh, let's see if there's a, a third. Oh, come on. Don't tell me that one's stuck too. Oh, boy, this is uh, these batteries, huh? We'll go through it with the brush after we get that third one out. Okay, now I believe this LED bulb will uh, will go all the way down and come out the uh, tail cap. And that's how you replace it. The problem is that there's a little bit of corrosion on the side of the wall in there. And I can't really get a good shot at it. But there's some corrosion down the side of that wall in there. And for me to get to that corrosion, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this... Uh, wire brush and now i want to mount this in the drill so what i'm going to do is i'm going to it comes with a loop at the end i'm just going to cut that loop off 
and and then this way use it this way spin it in there and get rid of that corrosion on the inside i already stuffed some paper towel there so and no uh residual chips will get into any of this circuitry okay so we were right uh this bulb this led bulb passes through the tail cap so you can't get it out through the top so it had to come out before the batteries now the one thing is there was a significant corrosion here and i'll show you here with the white background you can see that corrosion on the bottom at six o'clock of the tube here i'll rotate it so now it's at 12 o'clock you can see that corrosion well that was too thick for that bulb to come out so what i used to scrape the corrosion off was nothing but an old piece of uh, 3 8 inch by 16 all thread makes a great file so to speak to get in here and scrape that corrosion you just got to be very careful of these threads here and make sure that you don't you can always put a piece of tape over here and so that you could scrape the corrosion without messing up the threads but I was able to get that out. Now we're going to clean it out and put it back together with new batteries. And now we're going to replace the batteries with some fresh. These are good till, it says here, March of 2029. But you know what that means because the other ones were good to 2022. And you can see now they slide and right here. And here we have a successful fix. You could see to, uh, to turn this flashlight on and off, you uh, tighten the cap down. It turns it off. You twist it to turn it on, which is a nice design. No switch. But... The problem is them O-rings, you know, they don't let that flashlight off gas, but it's as good as new. And I think Dan will be happy as a clam because uh, he's had this flashlight for a long time. So, okay, let's get hey, to our next up on today's Mosh. I have a, a tool I picked up, a level, a type of level, and uh, I could use your help on this one. So let's go now, check it out. This is an item I picked up at the last meet, uh, our Long Island Tool Collectors Meet. And uh, this is, I looked at this and you see what it is, right? It's a level and uh or some type of level you can see here when you turn this like this this is a protective cover and it exposes the glass vial and there's the bubble in there and now i have no idea what it is but uh <laughs> i have some thoughts and before i uh i talk about it let me clean it up so you're not looking at a dirty level so let's get i'm going to do a quick cleanup on okay, this okay you can see there's not much to it less so we took it apart now we're going to uh, take it and wire brush and get everything cleaned up Now you know my favorite part. Remember what the level looked like before we started. And we are calling this project done. Look how nice this came out, even though I have no idea what this is. Uh, polished everything up. Everything is, you know, in spec and like it was when it was new. However, I have no idea. And, and this is what's so perplexing about this item. First of all, let's take a look at it, okay? Uh, you have this cast aluminum, roughly cast. This is a rough casting. It's not a very good casting. Yet, all these other parts, like this beautiful knurled screw and this, this great Stanley level, it's all beautiful. And brass knurled screws here. And this part, it's all nicely done, except for this kind of very rough cast base. Now, uh, that leads me to believe, I've, I've never seen this. I tried looking it up. There is one number on here. If you look over here this is the only number i could see and it says 16309 over here uh the only marking i could see on here on this level is here and you could see it says uh let's see what it says here it says stanley uh made in the usa you know just a beautiful piece now when i bought this i said we were doing levels at the time and i said you know what this be great for if you were to put this onto a board now i looked at the bottom and i said that looks like about about an inch and a half, which would you put on a two by four, you know, and you could have an eight foot level and then you could make it, you know, adjust it, you know, as we do to make sure that it's level. And once you have it, you can use it for an eight foot level and, and then take this off or whatever. I'm sure it's for something like that. So that's my question to you, because I know there's a lot smarter guys out there than me watching the channel. So have you ever seen this? Do you know what it is? Uh, like I said, I think it's something temporary. The problem is that this doesn't fit in a 2x4. 2x4 is just a little bit snug in here. And when I put it on a regular board, it, uh, you know, then it, it has a little teetering. So let me know what you think. 
for what you think this is. All right. Anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a nice day. Take care now. Bye-bye.